In today's video, we're gonna shoot out six lavalier microphones designed for use in film and TV. Let's go. Hey everybody, welcome back. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you these uh, six omnidirectional lavalier microphones that I like to use for TV and film production. They are currently attached to me underneath this shirt. We'll listen to each one, and then I'll just talk a little bit about the different features that sort of separate them from each other. Lavalier mics with an omnidirectional pickup pattern seem to be the weapon of choice for hiding underneath clothing. Um, because an omnidirectional pickup pattern listens in all directions, it sort of mitigates sound uh, from the clothing itself. Also helps with like wind noise and stuff like that because it's not taking it right on the nose, so to speak, with a, with a single direction. It's picking up equally in all angles. It also offers really nice coverage, so if you turn your head a little bit, you know, it still gets a pretty um, sort of even capture of the person's dialogue, which is great. If it's possible, I recommend you listen to this video with headphones on to really hear the detail between these different microphones as we go through them. Uh, we're going to start with the most expensive microphone. The DPA 6060 is, you know, probably one of the smaller mics of the bunch. It's pretty low profile. This is my first DPA lav, and uh, because of COVID, I have not really had a lot of chances to use it just yet. Um, the first thing I noticed about this lav is that it seemed quite a bit brighter than most lavs I own. And uh, if you're hiding lavs under clothing, I can see why this one might stand out as it sort of cuts through the clothing a little bit better. I've read some user reviews where they talk about how they felt like the DPAs are like, they get you the closest to the sound of a boom for a lavalier microphone, which, you know, is, is pretty much impossible. But uh, just figured I'd throw one up and just see what it sounds like in comparison. So right now, if we want to listen to the, uh, the boom above me, this is a Sheps Cmit uh, 5U uh, shotgun microphone. It's about about a foot from my mouth. And uh, now we'll switch back to the DPA 6060 and now back to the Cmit and now back to the 6060. So I think the idea is that the they it, this mic this lavalier microphone is supposed to cut pretty well with a boom track. Uh, and I'm sure in post they could probably EQ match these. They seem ballparky. Uh, but clearly one is a little more open sounding because it's a microphone that has no clothing in front of it and it's floating over my head and this one's smothered underneath the shirt. The DPA 6060 retails for about $550 USD. It comes stock with a micro dot connector on it. If you need it terminated to something else like TA4, TA5 or uh, eighth inch, you can buy from DPA a micro dot adapter, but they're like a hundred bucks each. So you're looking at almost 650 for this mic, um, which is, you know, pretty pricey, but it does sound nice. Um, what I think is interesting is that uh, they don't give you anything with it. There's no tie clip. There's no wind protection or anything like that. I think that stuff would be extra. You can buy it a la carte. Microphone number two is the Sankin COS 11D. This has been my go-to lab for like the past several years. If you watch reality TV or any sort of documentaries, there's like a good chance that you're listening to dialogue that was captured with this lavalier. I think I own about 10 or 11 of these microphones. They come in different various colors, which I'm going to show you right now on the screen. The Sankin Cost 11D is a little bit bigger than the DPA labs, not only in capsule length and cable girth, but also in the diameter of the capsule itself. However, they're still pretty easy to conceal and they can really take a beating. Uh, this microphone retails starting at $379, and I think depending which uh, connector you have put on it, it might bring the price up a little bit more. Um, but it does include a tie clip, a metal windscreen cap, and it also comes with this little rubber RM11 clip, which is designed to you know put adhesive on the back of it, and you can stick it um, to help conceal the microphone inside clothing or to people's skin. All right, lavalier number three is the Countryman B6. The B6 is another mic that I've been using for years. I would typically reach for a maybe Cost 11D first, um, but the B6 has been my go-to lavalier for button-down shirts because it's the tiniest microphone that I can find of this quality. Um, the head of the mic can literally hide behind a single button, and B6s have been traditionally used in Broadway where the mics have often been hidden in the actor's hairlines because they're so tiny. Personally, I find the tone of this microphone to just be a little too mid-rangey uh, to make it like my everyday mic. I use it for certain uh, scenarios where I, I need it to either be the tiniest mic I can find. Uh, it's also pretty good at getting wet. It seems to sort of, it's not a microphone you'd want to like submerge in water, but you can get splashed on and shake it off and it, you know, it's okay, uh, typically. 
your mileage may vary. Um, but yeah, I find that I find the sound of this mic to be a little mid rangey and I think it's cause it's missing that sort of open top end. I feel like it's almost like someone turned the treble down on this mic. And I even have right now the, uh, it comes with a variety of protective caps, uh, which are different lengths. And what's, what it's doing is like, there's one cap that's sort of called like the, the normal standard cap. Then there's a cap that's a little longer, just a tiny bit longer. And it's supposed to sort of soup up, I think like the 15 K, real top frequencies by like four decibels. And then there's an extra crisp cap that's even a little longer and supposed to soup those frequencies by another four dB. And right now I have the four dB one on to make it even just this bright. And I don't really hear a whole lot of 15 K at least as far as I can tell, but uh, it does help sort of uh, give you that little extra punch you might need to help it get through clothing. One thing to know about these mics is that I feel like they don't handle plosives very well. Um, when I do use them in like a buttonhole, like if you saw this button here, I might sneak the mic behind the button sticking out a little bit, but you have to be careful because sometimes they'll talk down or something, or they'll get some wind coming off their front back of their front teeth and it shoots down into the mic and you'll get that little poof, kind of plosive uh, overloading of the, of the diaphragm of the microphone. So it's something to be careful of. I've actually never even tried to use this mic outside because I feel like it's so susceptible to uh, wind noise. I know they do get used a lot in reality shows because they're so small. Um, so they do work for that, but in my opinion, I sort of stray away. I think that's why I end up reaching for the Cos 11D a little more uh, frequently as my sort of day-to-day -day microphone. The B6 retails for about 295, gets a little more expensive depending which connector you have put on it. Uh, but this mic comes with a really nice zippered pouch here and uh, with some dividers in it. And it's got a tie clip and it comes with some foam windscreen. And I think, as I mentioned, those different um, protective caps to sort of help hype up your high frequencies if you need that. Microphone number four is the Tram TR50. This thing is old school, man. This is like one of the first microphones I started out with. Um, this is sort of like a common microphone in the ENG news world. The reason I got away from this microphone and started moving more towards like into the Cos 11D and those kind of mics is because they were just easier to hide. This, what's interesting about this mic is its side address. Uh, even though it's an Omni pickup pattern, it's clearly brighter on, on the side that has the grill, right? So um, you can use that to your benefit too, which is nice. So say you have somebody who's overly sibilant, like I almost feel like this is too sibilant and that's because I have the mic facing outward, the grill facing outward through my shirt. If I flipped it around the other way, it might actually uh, sort of tame some of that high end. Uh, but it gives you an idea of what it's capable of. I mean, if you had a really heavy sweater or something like that, I would definitely aim it out to really cut through that thicker material. The Tram TR50 starts at $222 USD. It goes up a little bit depending which connector you need on it. And, uh, but it does include a plastic case, a winds, like a foam windscreen, and like a ton of clips, um, like a vampire clip, a tie clip, and then some other clips. I don't even know what they do. They're just like this slew of stuff, which is great. If you guys want, by the way, all the mics I'm talking about are going to be linked down in the description. Uh, so you can check them out if you want to purchase any of these. I'm actually... I'm pretty impressed with this TR50, man. I, I feel like maybe I uh, threw the baby out with the bathwater or something. Uh, I'm digging the sound, at least in this shirt, in this room. Pretty cool, right? For Not bad for a, a pretty inexpensive microphone. But wait, there's even two more that are less expensive than this one. All right, lavalier number five is the Deity WLAV Micro. This is a nice tiny little microphone, and it comes from uh, Deity, who is a company that I guess is sort of like somewhat newish on the pro audio circuit, uh, but they've quickly made a name for themselves, making, um, I guess, budget friendly, some might say prosumer audio products aimed at film and TV production. Uh, the WLAV Micro is actually quite micro. It's, I would say it's so small, it falls somewhere between like a DPA 6060 and then like the B6, the Countryman B6, it's somewhere in there. I should say I actually don't own any DAT mics. Uh, they sent me this to specifically use in this shootout of Lavaliers and I'm glad they did because I wanted to check these out. I've seen some other people review them. Uh, and one thing I, I sort of had a preconceived um, concern was that when I watched some of the other reviews, people pointed out that they sort of had this like level of like self noise, like a noise floor, like a shh kind of something in there. And I could even hear it on some of their videos. Um, but what they've done since then is they've included a different micro dot adapter. I don't know if this is official, so I don't know if I can say it's available or whatever. I think they're still like figuring it out, but they sent it with this mic. It's called the DA 
D5S, I think, instead of just a DA5, which is what they were sending with the previous ones. Uh, and I hear no, I hear no noise at all. I mean, at the end of this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to like do a little moment of silence for each mic, just so you can hear the noise floors from each one back to back. Um, but as far as I can tell, I don't. It doesn't sound any noisier than any other microphone, at least in these headphones right this second. This WLAV Micro retails at $209 USD. Uh, it actually includes the MicroDot adapter, which I think is pretty awesome. Like, there's no other companies that are throwing that in. They're charging like you know up to another hundred dollars for something like that. Uh, so that's really cool. And then it comes with some really nice um, accessories. It comes with a case. Comes with uh, some foam windscreens. It comes with a tie clip, and it also comes with some accessories for concealing, like little uh, rye coat stickies and some other stuff. There is a, like a, th a thing of tape in there, and it feels like duct tape. So I feel like I would throw that away because you definitely don't want to put duct tape on anything you care about, uh, like your talent, your talent's clothing, <laughs> or any of your gear. Uh, I don't know why it's that kind of tape. It should be, if you're looking for tape, go to the, go to the uh, pharmacy and get some Transpor or get some Moleskin. I think that stuff is uh, hypo hypoallergenic, and uh, it's it's nicer on the surfaces you put it on. All right, microphone number six is the WLAV Pro. It's a lot like the micro we just saw and heard. Um, this is essentially uh, a slightly larger capsule than their micro. It's four millimeters instead of three, uh, but it's still very small. I mean, you're in like DPA 6060 territory at that point. Uh, the cable on this mic is also a little thicker and seems to behave a little bit better when you wrap it up. Um, the cable on the micro seemed a little unwieldy. Um, however, uh, these DD mics, although they're new to me, I, I feel like this one sounds really good too. Uh, maybe a little less full in the low end. I, I can't quite tell on these headphones. I think that they're, you know, maybe we'll bounce between them real quick just to show you. This is the DT WLAV Pro, and now this is the DT WLAV Micro, and now we'll jump back to the DT WLAV Pro again. One thing that makes this mic stand out from the pack that I think is really worth mentioning is it has a weatherproof rating of IP57, uh, which I'm not at all familiar with, but apparently um, it means that it's almost completely like waterproof or almost completely sealed from dust and water and moisture getting into it. Uh, it's not all the way. Um, so I've seen some other reviews where people talk about this and I even saw somebody dip it in water for like a long time, maybe like 30 minutes or something like that. Um, so that's really cool that this mic can handle that kind of thing because say you have a shoot where, you know, it's people are gonna be splashing around, maybe it's a hot tub scene, maybe it's a fishing show or something and who knows, but I think it's really nice to know that you have a mic, especially one that's this inexpensive that you can sort of like mess it up with some water and maybe it won't sting quite as bad. Uh, you know, as it would with a more expensive microphone, yet we're still getting some pretty darn good sounding dialogue in my opinion. The WLAV Pro retails for 159, and again, it includes the MicroDot adapter, and it comes with the same case. It comes with some windscreens, and it also comes with a tie clip, which is nice. I think for many indie filmmakers or sound people putting together their first audio equipment package, this is like a very affordable way to get in, uh, especially if you're working in narrative and you need really small, hideable microphones. All right, so before we go, I'm gonna show a few images of the size of these microphones side by side so you can get an idea of how these stack up size-wise. Uh, another reason why I'm doing this is because we can use this time to hear me talk while we sort of jump between these various microphones. And now I also wanna show off these frequency response graphs just to give you an idea of how these stack up frequency response-wise. Some of them have a little more of a souped up top end, some of them have a little less low end. And the last thing I want to do at this point is our noise floor comparison. Uh, we're going to take six moments of silence here, and we're just going to listen to these microphones noise floor and just see how they're doing. Keep in mind, I'm in a home. Earlier, there was somebody jackhammering down the street, uh, but I'm in a pretty dead room. This is a studio room. It's covered in uh, paneling. Uh, my kids are home. I told everyone to be quiet. We'll see how that goes. So here we go. I think they're all kind of in the same ballpark as far as any kind of self-noise goes. 
Um, but there you have it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope this helped you maybe figure out what uh, lavalier makes sense for you based on your needs, how small it needs to be, how good it needs to sound, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button if you want to see more videos from me. Uh, I do production sound for a living. Um, so hope to see you on the next one. Thanks.